Hey folks, this is a Cinema 4D tutorial that is going to cover uh, Volume Builder. So Volume Builder is a way that we can combine multiple models together and use positive and negative shapes of those to create really complex forms. So here we go. If you click on Volume Builder menu, just drop in a Volume Builder. And if we start with something simple, I'm just going to bring in a cube and then I'm also going to bring in a sphere. And if I orient these two together, um, you know, we'll attempt to combine these in a configuration. So first of all, what I want to do is increase the resolution of the sphere. So segments of the sphere down here in the attributes manager, I'm going to bump this up to 72. Okay. And then what I'll do is bring both of these into the volume builder. And you'll see, we'll get this really kind of weird pixelated Minecraft looking object. So, um, volume builder works on what's called voxels, which are essentially like creating a block structure or on the perimeter of the objects. And we can make this look finer if we go to the voxel size in the attributes manager and, in, and decrease the, the uh, size of those. So it's almost like increasing the resolution. So if I go from 10 centimeters to one centimeter and hit return, now I'll get a form that feels much more sort of connected. Um, now the great thing about this is we can uh, smooth things out with this. Now, first of all, what I may want to do is with the cube actually just give it a little fillet to the surface. So I'm just going to do this to give it a bit of rounding. That's going to help just a little bit. I'm going to increase it just a little bit. That's good. And then um, what I'll do with the volume builder is I'm going to go down here and um, do this smooth. So I'm just going to click the smooth button. There we go. And notice what happens to it. It makes this really kind of cool plasticky effect, almost like you poured resin or glaze over the top of it. And you have some controls with this then as well. So down here, the voxel, the strength of this you can control, so you can have it be less of that kind of um, smooth, more of that sort of smooth. I wonder if you can go above 100. Let's see. Let's try to make it 200. Nope, 100 is the max. And voxel distance uh, also makes those voxels a little bit bigger. So it's almost like it would fill in more of that space kind of on the shoulders of where those objects are connecting. So that could be an interesting thing to do. Eight seems to be too big here. Um, so that's a great way when you start to combine these things. Now the cool thing is about this is you can move these around, right? So the sphere, you could move, excuse me, let's move that. Come on, you move. <laughs> Sometimes the controls get a little buggy. There we go. It's a little hard on my computer right now, but that's okay. So notice this, you know, I've moved it. It's a different kind of configuration. It's looking pretty good. I can also, in the volume builder, if you go down to the menu, notice where it says sphere here and it says union. I can actually subtract that as well, right? And so this can be really helpful when you're building complex shapes and forms. Uh, by adding and subtracting in, in a variety of different combinations. Um, so, you know, if we, let's just bring in one more object, maybe we'll bring in one more cube, and we'll kind of scale this down. And one thing to note is if you wanted to like cut this directly in half, then you would need to go beyond the perimeter of the object, right? So if I made this like this, <clears throat> and I brought it into the volume builder, and then in the down in the attributes, if I make the cube instead of a union, if I make it a subtract, and suddenly I would have this slice right down the middle, right? So again, you can make really, really complex forms with this and, um, you know, and, and really work in a variety of different ways. What I've liked about this um, type of modeling in particular is it really sort of changes the way that I think about modeling. Suddenly I'm really thinking about positive and negative space instead of always thinking about trying to build in one sort of type of format. So again, subtract that out. And I've got this really complex, intricate kind of form that I could continue to add on to and add on to. So especially when you're looking at mechanically made objects, really consider the volume builder. The last thing I'll note here about volume builder is, I'm just gonna get rid of this one here. Um, I'll get rid of that one too. Okay, so one thing about this is it's not, it's not really an object yet. We're just, this is all just hypothetical at this point. So if we render it out, we don't see anything. So the next step we need to do is to go to the volume builder menu and select the volume mesher. And then simply take the volume builder and place it inside the volume mesher. And now we have a renderable object. Okay, there's, there's, uh, I'll get into this further. It's super powerful, but 
basically the volume measure, you do have some uh, controls. So the threshold is gonna change a little bit about how much of that smoothing kind of effect happens. The adaptive also changes. So I'll show you what adaptive does. This, I use this mostly when I'm doing 3D printing. So if we display with, with shading with lines, notice how many pixels this is, or how many polygons it is. A lot of polygons there, right? Huge mesh, which could be really big and take a long time to um, transfer, to 3D print, things like that. So if I use the adaptive and I just simply start to increase this, then notice I'm still having the smooth shape, but it's less polygons and it's keeping more polygons where it's really needed the most for those curves. So that can be really helpful when you are um, working with things like 3D printing or simply trying to keep your file sizes down. So again, volume builder, combine forms together, play with positive, negative, play with the smoothing options, uh, really to make it an object, the volume builder needs to go into the volume measure and then you can control the voxel range threshold and the adaptive for the, um, for the mesh, and it's just a great way to model.